it's crazy. I, it, it was just, it's very shocking. It's very shocking to me, even still to this day. Hey friends, and welcome back to another day on the vlog. I really hope you guys are having a beautiful week. I hope this week has been treating you well so far. I am really feeling myself. I just did my hair last night and I'm like, okay, I kind of ate, you know what I'm saying? But we're not gonna talk about that too much, okay? In today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that has been long, I mean, I'm not gonna say long awaited or anticipated because like in reality, who's waiting? You know what I'm saying? But it has been requested quite a few times for me to sit down and really talk more in depth about what my experience has been with living in Mexico City. And I don't really know why I've been avoiding making this video. Like I have a couple of reasons, but um, I just, I've just been pushing it off. Um, I've been pushing it off. And it wasn't until last week when I met up with a new friend, Aliki. Shout out Aliki if you're watching this. And she was like, so I'm moving to Mexico City for a little bit and I really enjoyed watching your videos. I feel like they've really given me some good insight on what I can expect when moving here. But this one thing, Tulu, you did not prepare me for. And I was like, oh snap. Because it's true, like I really haven't talked about it and it's been intentionally uh, it's been intentional, me not talking about it, just because, I don't know. I don't know, we're gonna get into it, but I just didn't want anybody coming for me, you know, if you don't like this, go back to your country type stuff. I just didn't need that. And so I was kind of trying to find the right moment and the right way to talk about it. Um, but I can't wait any longer, okay? I need to really be honest with you guys. I really need to let y'all know what my experiences have, has been living in Mexico City and hopefully help you guys out if you're thinking about it in the future, okay? So let's just go ahead and get right on into it, all right? You know we have to start off the video with the pros because there are so many pros. I owe Mexico City so much. I'm so grateful for my time here. It's been a true dream. And so we gotta start off with the pros. Also, if you guys notice a difference in my background, I'm currently in Seattle right now visiting Bay T, the bestie. So um, yeah, I that's what the next vlog is gonna be about, but that's why the background is different. But anyway, 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 I have my list here. Let's go ahead and get into pro number one. My first pro about moving and living in Mexico City is that the process is fairly simple and easy and straightforward for tourists, for newcomers. If you guys don't know, Mexico does have a six month tourist visa and it resets every time you leave the country, right? And so I think for, for somebody like me who is thinking about moving but doesn't really want to or know how to do all of the legal, you know, immigration type stuff, I think Mexico makes it fairly easy in this way. And that's what I've been on for the past uh, nine months now, 10 months now. And I travel fairly often, so it just keeps resetting every time I leave. And I think I think this is this is something that you might not think about that as being a, a really good thing, but you know, if you look into moving to other places, you start realizing, wow, the maximum time I can stay is 90 days, you know, three months, and then after I have to leave, and it doesn't reset right away if I come back, you know? So I really appreciate Mexico for this and it's really made living in Mexico City that much easier. So that is pro number one. Pro number two would be the city itself, you guys. If you've ever been to Mexico City or watched a video, a vlog about it, you just know like just some, there's something special in this city, okay? It feels alive, it feels like it has so much good energy and good people. And I think from the very first time I visited, it was just four days. But after those four days, I was like, I'm in love. Like it's time to move, literally. So I just feel like for me, somebody that moved away from Northern California, Silicon Valley, I needed a change. I needed, I needed some different type of energy than the corporate rat race type stuff. And I think Mexico City's energy was just amazing for me. And I think it, with that goes the walkability of the city. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, to, I'm gonna keep referring back to uh, my time in the Bay Area. But it's like, why can you not 
walk anywhere. I feel like when I was walking around San Jose, it was almost giving like, is she okay? Like, does she need a ride? Is she hitchhiking type energy? You know what I'm saying? Because nobody, nobody walks. And to be able to get outside of my house and walk, not only just, you know, down the street to the coffee shop, but literally I can be walking for two hours and I'm still in new areas. You know what I'm saying? I'm still seeing new things and it's still a good vibe, good energy. So I really love that. And I think that really helps in regards to maintaining an active lifestyle. The city itself is active. There's so much energy. I've told you guys before that they shut down the streets um, on Sunday morning to really promote people getting active and going on runs, riding their bike, rollerblading, stuff like that. And so I think just overall, my point number two is just the energy, the walkability, and the liveliness of the city is, is unbeatable, honestly. I haven't found it anywhere else just yet. So that's point number two. My third pro is that Mexico City, I would say, is very solo date friendly, okay? I'm somebody, y'all know I love to take a solo date, okay? I love to have a day by myself. And as somebody that's also on a budget right now, being um, self-employed, okay, I don't got the coin to be spending, spending, spending. But what I love about Mexico City is that a lot of the things are very affordable, if not free, in regards to if I wanna go to a museum, okay, museums are free. If I wanna go to the zoo, that's free. You know, there's a lot of parks. I can go and sit and have a beautiful picnic by myself. Um, and there's so many cute cafes and cute restaurants that I can treat myself to. So like there's so many different points in that one, but I'm just going to call it solo date friendly or also just the fact that they have really cute spots and that they are affordable. Okay. Wallet friendly, I will say. So that is point number three. And I think it leads very seamlessly into point number four, which the, the food scene in Mexico city, Y'all can't talk to me about that. The food scene, like if you are a foodie and you haven't been to Mexico City yet, I don't even know what to tell you. I don't even know what to tell you. You need to get there right now. You need to book a ticket, okay? But no, honestly, you guys, there are so many good restaurants and cafes. And if I was not on a budget right now, I would, I would be going somewhere new every single night. And I feel like even if I went to a new restaurant every single night, something different every day of the year, I still wouldn't run out of options in Mexico City, you know? So I, I can't talk enough about the food scene, really good food. If you like to eat, I would, I would say that this is a really good place for you, so. Oh, and another thing, the restaurants, they're not just nice, like the food is not just nice, but also aesthetically, it's an experience to go to some of these restaurants, like the ambiance, the interior design, well thought out, just well thought out. Like everything is just visually, visually very pleasing to the eye, I will say. So that is my pro number three. And then my fourth pro is something that's going to be all encompassing, I will say, leaving the Bay Area, leaving Silicon Valley. I just, like I said, I needed a change. I was tired of what I was doing. I was tired of working in um, the corporate world. And there was just some passions and dreams inside of me that I needed to let out. And I feel like Mexico City is truly a place where the, the opportunities and the possibilities are endless. I feel like you can really reinvent yourself here if you wanted to. And I feel like there's truly something for everybody like if you are into fencing you know like fencing i saw a fencing place if you are into pickleball you know if you want to do tennis you want to do pottery you know pilates they got they got it you know what i'm saying and it's not surprising considering that it is the biggest city in north america so i don't know why i would be surprised but um i would say like Anything that you are interested in doing, I feel like you'll be able to get into it here. And y'all know, like even my childhood dreams of being an actress, I've been able to do that here. That is crazy. Being an actress, um, joining a dance team, I, I did that for a little bit. It's just like, I, it just, I could never have imagined doing these things back in the Bay Area. So for that, I really, really, really 
owe it to Mexico City. I'm so grateful for my time here so far, you guys. And I, I have like, I'm just, I'm really grateful for it. And I really do love this city. So those are my pros for now. Those are like the big ones that I really wanted to share with you guys. But now it's time to talk to y'all about some things that have been a little harder to adjust to for me that have that have made my experience not like a hundred out of ten you know what i'm saying and i just really want to keep it real with you guys okay i really want to keep it real with you so please have an open heart and mind and hear me out all right so the first thing i'm sure you guys have heard of it if you have read anything about mexico city seen anything about it but it is the water issue okay um the water we can't drink from the tap and that you know it's just slightly inconvenient it adds a little bit more to the monthly expenses but it's okay you'll get used to it and it's okay right uh, i realized i did take being able to drink from the tap for granted or just having like clean running water for granted i definitely did um but it is something to keep in mind and i know i've mentioned before that i can't use the tap water on my skin or my hair anymore because it does irritate it does irritate them so that is something that that has just taken a little bit of getting used to and if you guys haven't heard mexico city is actually running out of water and there was actually a, a day zero where they anticipated that the city would run out of water completely but that was in june 2024 so just a couple months ago and as far as i know it hasn't run out because i think the rain has been helping it's been raining heavily in mexico city so i think that has really been helping but it's kind of scary to think that you know in a couple years if not this year the water could run out you know so that's what i would say is my first downside but now moving into my con number two that is going to be the cost of living in mexico city okay so i know that if you are thinking about moving to cdmx if you've been looking into it you might have the perception that the cost of living is going to be way better you know you can afford to live a higher quality of life there but i will say i think you should start adjusting your perspective about that things are getting a lot more expensive and before y'all get into the comments just stop okay i know you are getting ready to type something like it's because of people like you that are moving there and gentrification i know i know i know i understand um the landlords have been raising prices there are areas that i cannot afford to live and so i know that you know when it comes to the locals being able to afford it's unimaginable um i know that but i just want to be really clear and transparent with you guys things are not as affordable as you might think and there are some prices especially in regards to rent that do look very similar to what i was seeing in the bay area oh my god hold on my foot is falling asleep <laughs> there are some prices that are starting to look very similar to the silicon valley the bay area of california and stuff um, and if you do choose to stick to the more touristy gentrified areas like Roma Norte or Condesa, that's what you're going to be seeing. You're not going to, you're not going to be seeing the, the low prices that you might have in mind. Okay. So keep that in mind. That is what I would say is my con or downside number two, just because like you guys know, I quit my job and I moved here and my coin is not stretching as far as I would like it to be. And God is my provider. You know what I'm saying? He has been making a way for me to pay this rent the past 10 months. Pero, I don't know. I just, I can't afford it. At this point in my life, I can afford it. So keep that in mind, okay? For con number three, I know you guys have heard me say a couple of times in this video, I don't need anybody in my comments saying, go back to your country, anything like that, right? But I feel like when it comes to moving to Mexico City or Mexico in general, because I've seen it with like Guadalajara, Merida, other, other uh, states and cities in Mexico, um, I just feel like, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's so far as like a, a hatred towards foreigners, but I just feel like I have noticed more with people moving to Mexico City that there will be people in their comments saying like, we don't want you here go back to your country 
you know, go to this place, like knowing that it's a very dangerous place. It's just not nice. You know what I'm saying? And I haven't seen that for people that are, say, moving to Europe or Asia. I just haven't seen that. And it's a little surprising because, you know, Mexico, Mexicans are very kind, welcoming, open. But I have just seen, um, I have just seen that to be the case. Not necessarily on my videos, which you guys are super sweet all the time, super supportive. But sometimes when I walk around and I have an interaction that is not like the nicest, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, is it because that's just who you are? Like not a nice person or is it because you feel some type of way about me being a foreigner living here yo no sé i don't know okay but it's just something that i have noticed here that i haven't really noticed being elsewhere okay so just keep that in mind especially as you know gentrification continues to happen here the water continues to run out like i get it i i, I get it people people are frustrated and they don't want like their livelihood is being interrupted you know what i'm saying so just keep that in mind but now for my con number four i want to talk about something that doesn't really affect me too much but i know other people that it has affected and that is pollution and dust so mexico city sits at the base like surrounded by mountains and so basically all the dust kind of settles in this little valley and so it is really dusty like even if um even if we leave our windows closed in our apartment, there will be a film of dust overnight. Like if we clean our apartment the next morning, there will be dust there. And there's, there is there is pollution, like as you can expect, being the largest city in North America, there there is gonna be some effects of that, right? But I have a friend that they told me that when they bike and they go home at the end of the day, they'll blow their nose and it'll be black from the soot and from all the pollution. So if you are somebody that has any respiratory conditions or is like affected by pollution and dust, just keep that in mind, okay? All right, so now we have made it to the last con or like downside that I wanna to talk to you guys about. And this is the one that my friend Aliki was like, you didn't prepare me for this. This is the one that I just haven't really known how to talk about it too much. Um, but that is the catcalling and the staring from men in particular. Is is okay, we're about to get into it, okay? Is it's a bit much, you guys. It's a bit much. Like when I first got here, I, after a week, after a couple of days, I was like, I can't do this. I gotta go. I gotta go. I don't know where I'm going, but I gotta go. Okay. Because there's no way. Um, it was like, imagine you're just walking down the street and I'm, everything is new. You know, I'm just observing everything and tell me why everybody is out of their car. Just like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, what, 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 what am I wearing? Like what, like, what am I doing to be attracting this attention but it was just crazy and yemi was just like i don't even notice it just don't pay attention to them you know you'll get used to it whatever and i was like i don't know about that but after a while i determined first of all not to look in the cars anymore i don't be making eye contact with nobody in their cars when i'm walking and i kind of forgot about that but it's still very much a thing where men in particular like will just stare like I'm just like, it's just surprising because coming to Mexico, right? We are very similar in skin tone. I mean, it's, it's different, but it's still similar enough. You know what I'm saying? And there are black people here. There are Africans here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, I was just shook because when I went to Asia, Korea, I did not feel this. I did not feel this stared at, this... It's crazy. I, it, it was just, it's very shocking. It's very shocking to me, even still to this day. But I've talked to many women here and honestly, all of them have the same experience. Even like Mexican, my Mexican friends, they've said, yeah, like we just have to get used to it. Um, it's just a, I, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or what, but they definitely experience it too. But what I will say is I think, I think there might be a slight fetish towards chocolate skin. I don't know. That's what I've concluded. 
I think there might be a fetish towards chocolate skin and like dark skin in particular because I have received many comments about my skin. People have called me morena, all this kind of stuff. I know that there is uh, an appreciation, a deep appreciation for, you know, brown skin, chocolate skin. I know that and I get that. But I think especially when it comes to the men, it just goes a little too far past appreciation and it's like low key it just feels like a fetish and honestly it's gotten to the point where i feel like i do start thinking a little bit more about what i wear before i leave the house and i do try a little harder to not say look like a look like a man but sometimes i do i do try to like just look a little bit more boyish a little bit more grungy just so i don't get that extra attention you know what i'm saying but honestly it doesn't help it really doesn't help and you would think I'm Beyonce with the way I'd be walking around and men just be staring. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I've actually been walking with Maria one time and she's had to say something to them. And I have determined I'm not going to do that because I am, I am in a foreign country. I am a foreigner here. I don't want no drama. But she has definitely had to say something on my behalf. And I will say that if this is something that doesn't bother you and you appreciate the appreciation, then you're going to love it here. But for me, I don't want or need attention from men. I don't desire the male gaze. And so it's just something that is a little bit uncomfortable on a daily basis. And it's like, if I am thinking to leave my house that day, I have to like mentally prepare for, this, for the stairs. You know what I'm saying? And I'll say like, I've never been as, uh, what do you call? I've never been as aware of myself as I have been in Mexico City, just cause I feel like there are literally a pair of eyes on me constantly. And I'm not even trying to be conceited y'all. I will give you, I'm gonna give you guys some examples, okay? A couple weeks ago, I was at the bus stop and you know, just observing, just waiting for the bus, looking across the street. Tell me why there is a van right in front of me with three men in the front seat just like this and i literally had to do a double take i was like and then they like smile and wave and i'm just like that's just that's just very that's <sighs> i don't know another example another example one day i was working out on the top of my roof right tell me why there's a man on another building's roof and he notices me jump roping or whatever tell me why he just goes and perches and is like ready to watch me do my whole workout. I say, so then I stand there for a couple of seconds and I'm watching him and we're just having a staring battle with each other until he finally gets it and moves along. I'm like, you literally were just gonna stand there for the last, for the next 30 minutes? Really? I've shown you guys the instances where, you know, there will be men just like randomly recording me on the street. I'm like, why are you recording me? There was this one time a guy literally follows me is i move he moves i keep moving he keeps moving until i'm just like what do you want and i'm just staring at him and again we're having this staring battle until he moves on and i'm just like what is going on what is going on is too much it's too much like i know i'm a baddie but it doesn't have to be like this you know what i'm saying so there's there's been honestly too many experiences like this and it's just it's just a little too much for comfort for me to live you know on a daily basis so if i'm being completely honest it has affected um how long i see myself living in mexico city it has affected my longevity here and uh I don't know it's something i'm praying about to see where i will end up next after our lease ends in november so i just wanted to really share and be transparent about my experience in that area i haven't talked too much about it because again i don't really know how to and i don't want anybody to think that um i don't even know but it's it was finally time especially after aliki called me out on it so and I will say like Aliki and I look very similar, like same complexion, same body shape, everything like that. So 
just keep that in mind. If you are, especially like my complexion, because I have talked to women, other black women, other, you know, other women, they haven't experienced it as much. So again, I don't know if it's a fetish or what, but being my complexion, looking the way that I do, that is, that has been my experience. So yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the, that's the, that's the last thing. That's my last con. That's the, the biggest thing for me, honestly. That is my list of pros and cons of living in Mexico City after having lived here for about 10 months now. Overall, you guys, the experience really has been a dream. If you have watched my videos, you would know that I really have been living and loving the, the life that me and my sister have started out here. So it's been really sweet. And I just really wanted to share the real and the raw with you guys. <clears throat> be open and honest and transparent about everything so you don't come here and like be caught off guard, okay? So that's about it. Please let me know if you have any more questions in the comments, if there's something you want me to talk more on that might not be a pro or con, but you just wanna know more about. Um, I can do that too. And I hope you guys would still rock with me even if my videos, you know, end up being from somewhere else that's not Mexico City. I hope, I hope you guys st still stick around, but thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in my next vlog, which will be from Seattle where I'm currently at right now. So I'll talk to you guys a little later. Bye.